Today's guest is a woman of God who exemplifies the life of an overcomer. She's a Texas, Texas native, sports lover, specifically speaking, a Dallas Cowboys lover. <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. We'll talk about that. <laughs> and has worked in the healthcare industry for over 20 plus years. She is a single mother of two adult children. She is a survivor of a toxic marriage, which sadly led to divorce. Her book, The Unexpected, The Ride of My Life, released in December 2019, which is one woman's journey through the highs and lows of marriage and divorce. She is the creator of the Facebook group, Life After Divorce, Get Your Happy Back. She is the owner of the exclusive gear, Get Your Happy Back. And she is Coach Twyla. I didn't want to give up her name already, but I guess you already know. <laughs> uh, the Get Your Happy Back Divorce Coach and the host of Divorce Talk with Twyla, which is a live weekly show on YouTube where she talks all things divorce with her expert guests each week. Brave Hearts community, let's show some love to Coach Twyla. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm great. I'm great, Sean. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here and have this discussion. Yes, for sure. We're going to discuss forgiveness because I just, in my opinion, I just think you can't get another healthy, you can't get into a healthy relationship until you learn how to forgive from the last one. But, That's but, right. <laughs> I would agree 100%. <laughs> oh, but we'll talk about that. By the way, love the YouTube channel. Your show is much needed. We will talk about that at the end of the show because I want to make sure that those who might have been, gone, who might have been through a divorce, or currently going through a divorce, I believe that they need your show as well. Oh, awesome. Yes. So this whole thing on forgiveness, why is it important in a relationship and even after a relationship? Oh, yes. So it's important. Let's talk about in, in a relationship first. It's yes. very important because, you know, you have, you're in a relationship, you're living with that person and things come up, you're going to have disagreements. But in my opinion, Sean, it's really how you handle those disagreements mm -hmm. while you're in a relationship, because you're going to have to forgive and move on. And, you know, you're married to this person and don't continue to bring it up in a relationship. If you, once you forgive, move on and something else will come up, but you just got to go with the highs and lows of a relationship because of relationships take work right mm -hmm. take work and so um after a relationship i always say sean forgiveness is for you it's really not for the other person it's for you especially after a relationship moving on and if you're looking to get into a new relationship you have to learn how to forgive from the previous relationship and get rid of that baggage and work on all those things that may have occurred in the relationship that wasn't good Mm -hmm. And so it's important in both aspects, I believe. Yes, for sure. So do you believe in uh, not letting the sun go down on your wrath if you get into it with a spouse? Do you believe in that? Like, do you think we should just kind of fix this situation before we go to bed? Or is it like, um, I'll let them sleep on it? <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> I would say if you, the emotions are still at an all time high it's probably not a good idea to discuss something when you are emotionally involved or you, your emotions are still, like I said, at all time high, but your emotions calm down, you calm down, then you can have a productive conversation with your spouse, you know? And um, yeah, I know that don't let the sun go down on your wrath, but sometimes people just aren't ready to talk about it, right? Um, and so give them that space, give yourself the space and spell space, meaning to calm down first. If it's such a heated topic of discussion, you definitely need to calm down to have a productive uh, conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Cause I'm one of the type of people where if my wife and I having issues, I want to talk about it now. <laughs> she okay. want to, she, she want to sit on it and, 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 hatch some eggs and all she want to do all this other <laughs> stuff and i'm just like but what am i supposed to do in the process but that's another show for another time <laughs> <laughs> everybody handles things differently <laughs> that is very very true and when you're talking about the forgiveness and i think about like having a short-term memory 
um, about the forgiveness, especially because you married to this person or, you know, if you were just significant other, just having this short term memory is so good. I heard an analogy because you're a Dallas Cowboys fan. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I die heard hard. That, oh, die hard. OK, well, die hard. <laughs> well, we, we could talk about Cowboys off camera because I, I got a lot to say about them. <laughs> but I'm not going to talk bad about about the Cowboys, but I, I heard uh, uh, I heard one time about defensive backs in the NFL that the they coach tell them that anytime you get beat for a long play on a touchdown, they always tell the defensive backs to have a short memory that you cannot go back out on that field thinking about what they just did to you on the last offensive drive. Right. So every time you get out there, you're facing the same guy all game and you got to have short term memory, no matter how bad he beat you during previous plays. And I thought that was really good. Just using that analogy. And I'm thinking the same thing, like got to have short term memory because I can't drag this stuff with me and expect to have a productive marriage afterwards. That's right. Short term memory. Mm -hmm. Short term memory. Yes. So how long does it take to forgive? Well, you know, everyone is different. And I, you know, me personally, I, I don't think I can put a time frame on it. You know, it may take somebody a week. It may take somebody else a year or a month. It just varies. And um, based on the situation, based on the person, I don't think we can really just say, oh, and five days, you're, you're good. You'll forgive them or, you know, in five hours, can't really equate the time um, because it's different for everyone in every situation, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And no, I agree. And the reason I asked you that question is because sometimes infidelity happens in, in marriages. Right. And sometimes the offender is like, dad, it's been eight weeks. Why are you still thinking about what I did eight weeks ago? Yeah. You know, and I'm just like, I know, but you didn't get them. I mean, they still need that time. You know, they still need time. And, and people will be mad. And I'm just like, no, you got to let them heal. Yes, absolutely. And I 100% agree. Um, infidelity didn't really occur in my marriage, but something occurred prior to our marriage. And I found out during the marriage. And I'll tell this story uh, as we're talking about how long mm -hmm. it takes to forgive. And at the time, of course, my husband was pretty much eating out of my hands and <laughs> he did whatever I needed for me, you know, to heal. And it could have been a lot worse. It could have happened in the marriage. You know, they say some people get cold feet or they need to do something prior to they time the knot. I don't know, but that's what happened. And y'all read between the lines and mm -hmm. I thought, I can't do this. You know, I, I, we're newlyweds. I just found out some news, something that happened while we were engaged. And I can't trust this man. And so I had to work on me um, it, to gain trust again in him. And it was tough. And so infidelity is definitely one of those topics, uh, Sean, where they may take you weeks or months to get over and forgive and move on and go through that healing process. And some people, unfortunately, in their marriage after infidelity, but some, you know, they can sustain it through the hard time and the difficult time of infidelity. But that's one that requires a lot of work and therapy, counseling to get through it, mm. to get through it because the trust is broken, right? Trust yeah. is gone. And you have to do things to gain that person's trust back. So time on forgiveness, really, I don't think you can really put a time frame on it. It's mm -hmm. just different for every situation and everyone. Yeah. So yeah. Are, were, were there any tools that you use to kind of help with the forgiveness? Like, is there anything that you can give the listeners? Maybe, maybe they might be dealing with infidelity or maybe they just found something out. Like what did Twyla do to... To, to, to get herself yeah. back together and forgiveness. Like what, what did you, you know, what did you do? You know, it's been a long time ago because I've been divorced now for I'm like, right at 15 years. So mm -hmm. we're talking, I was married 10. So we're talking a long time ago, but I recall one particular uh, thing that I did. Of course I did go to counseling. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to couples counseling. We, I went to counseling by myself. 
um, to work on just my feelings and how I was feeling going through that whole process. So one thing I will say to the listeners today is if you find yourself in that situation, don't try to um, make it happen overnight. It, you don't get through that thing overnight. It takes time. It takes work. It takes patience. Um, and then also ask yourself, do you do I still love him? Do I still love her? Whatever the case may be. Work on that. And if you're feeling like you still love them, then make your decision, right? And once you make that decision, folks, go forward. Meaning if you decide to stay in that relationship, stay in that marriage, don't keep going back and forth. One minute you're on like you're on a seesaw, but up and down, up and down. Oh, I'm leaving. Oh, no, I think I'm gonna say you make your choice, you make your decision, work on that whatever you decide to do whether you decide to stay or whether you decide to leave and if you decide to stay get into some therapy get into some counseling surround yourself with positive people that will pour life into you and not, not be negative about the situation and the less uh that you share with folks the less folks that know will be better <laughs> be better especially family if you make the decision to stay you may not want to involve your family because oh you you i'm telling you because you might forgive them your spouse but family don't maybe still looking with a side eye mm -hmm. yeah that's I, yeah that's some wisdom right there because you could be fixing his plate and your sister come walk up next to you and be like why are you fixing that man plate? You know he cheated on you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I'm I'm just saying, but that's real. I, I'm glad you said that because you can get past something and yeah. man, will people remind you? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. What, what is the biggest mistake women make in marriage? Woo! You come and ask me some good ones here, Sean. <laughs> some good questions. Well, well I'm, I watch your show and now, you know, I'm like, it's, it's your turn now. All right, all right. Biggest mistake, I feel that submission is one of the top mistakes that women make because, you know, we're raised to be independent. We, Some of us have been told we don't need a man and we can do things on our own and make your own decisions and all that good stuff. But at the end of the day, when you get into a marriage a relationship that's headed towards marriage, you do need to submit. And that I had an issue with that because I was raised by a strong woman, my grandmother, and she taught me to just do things on my own. Don't worry about it. You got it. But when you get into a marriage and your husband say, you know, babe, I think we should stay home or we should do this. We should do that. Don't try to argue with him and say, well, no, 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 no. You know, if he's the head of the household, because that's the way God um, establish this marriage thing, right? The man is the head of the household. He leads the household. Then it's our job as women or as wives to follow, to follow. Now, somebody may be asking, well, what if I can't follow him? He's just messing up, doing all kinds of stuff. Still, it says, it didn't say submit if he does <laughs> things right. It says submit, wives submit to your husband. So you know, I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that we make. And as we're talking about forgiveness, I'll also say another thing is when you do forgive, forgive. Don't keep bringing that thing up when you get into an argument. Well, you remember two months ago you did this and I forgave you. No, 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 no. Got to let it go. Got to let it go. If you truly have forgiven, mm -hmm. got to let it go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, because you can get into those heated arguments. You arguing about something else. And next yeah. thing you know, you know, she didn't bring up, well, well, did Keisha submit to you? You just like, <laughs> <laughs> what does Keisha got to do with this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. so I no, I totally understand. So uh, please don't come for us in the comment section because uh, th that's a very controversial topic when you talk about submission. Yes, especially, it is. especially in, in, in today's age. But I'm glad that you brought that up because they're um, women are independent, I, I guess. And while we're here, I would like to ask you this as well. 
and and maybe you you can't speak for all women, but maybe just kind of give me some kind of share some light on this. Mm -hmm. Why is it that some women get in relationships with a man who you don't trust his leadership? It's like, why would you be with somebody if you don't trust their decision making? That's a good question. <laughs> uh, me personally, I wouldn't. <laughs> you know, trust is a huge component in a relationship or a marriage. And if you don't trust the person, why are you there? I, I don't know. Maybe there's some other um, things that he, he is providing for her. I, I don't know. But trust is big. No monetary value for me, for me personally speaking. You can't put any monetary value on trust. I don't care how much money you make, how whatever, what kind of car you drive, what kind of house you live in, all of that, where your status is. If I can't trust you, then we really don't have anything. So I don't know. Maybe they're, like I said, maybe he's providing something or bringing something to the table that she can kind of overlook the trust factor. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That was a good, that's a good question. We should survey some women and find that out. I agree. Yeah, let's let's tag team that because I'm just yeah. dying no, because I can post that on social media and nobody won't respond. And I'm just like, I know you saw this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, maybe we should talk about that. Um, yeah. how how do you know when you have forgiven someone? Oh, yes. You know. When you know you've forgiven someone, you don't bring it up again, right? You let it go. And if you see that person, say if it's after a relationship, let's come from that angle because you know I'm all about divorce recovery. Mm -hmm. So if it's after a relationship and you've left a toxic marriage and you see that person, especially if you have kids, you're going to see them, you know, or her, you're going to interact with one another because you have minor children. Mm -hmm. And you see them and you don't feel any kind of way. They don't give you any kind of emotion, the negative emotion. You can have a cordial conversation with them and move on, you know, and that's how I feel like you, you've forgiven a person. Mm -hmm. Or when you do talk to him or her, you're not arguing over something that he or she did in the marriage and you're still dealing with the hurt. Well, mate. We may need to go back to the healing process or go back to some more counseling or therapy. And that's fine because everybody's healing journey is different. It takes everybody different times. There's no cookie cutter for it. It just depends on the individual. So like I said, emotions, if you see that person and you're good and they don't make you feel any kind of way, mm. Mm. or you see them, this is another good one, Sean, or you see them with another woman or man, Ooh. Whatever the case is, and you don't feel any kind of way because your ex is now holding hands or booed up with somebody else. Mm. If you don't feel kind of way, any kind of way, that's that's probably a good sign that you've forgiven them and you've moved on. But if you do, then hmm, you might have to go back to the drawing board. Oh, that's good. I like <laughs> that. That's really. I I totally agree. Uh, because I know when I went through my divorce, uh, I shoot, and my ex wife was, you know, if she found somebody, I would be happy for her. I'd be like, hey, it's all good. Like, I was, I was, yeah, I was at a place in my life where I was good. Like, mm -hmm. so, um, and that's how I knew that I was, I was in a good spot because I'm like, okay, I want, yeah. I want you to be happy. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, love it. Um, love it. Yeah, because sometimes people can can struggle with that because the minute they see, and I'm glad you brought that up, brought up the ladder when you said if they with someone. Oh yeah, that's a that's a whole different feeling right there. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Listen here, I mean, I remember seeing my ex, and this was after we went through that um, forgiveness and all of that, and um, but yeah, I saw him, and I didn't feel any kind of way. Matter of fact. We were at a football game because my son played football all through, you know, junior high. Well, from Pee Wee all the way through high school, actually. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel kind of way. Yeah. I think he purpose, purposely brought her along. And I, I was like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. I maybe just to see how I was going to react. And when I tell you, it didn't phase me at all. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it really didn't. <laughs> That's good. I was I was scrolling through your Instagram, of course, I'm doing my homework. Yeah. And you you had a post that said, 
the abandonment you experienced was part of your advancement. Break yeah. that down for us. Please. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So, um, so yes, I have experienced abandonment, you, you know, even as a child. Um, I was raised by my grandmother, didn't meet my father until I was 21. My mom and I, we had a relationship, but it was different than a mom and daughter's relationship should be, meaning because she didn't raise me. Mm -hmm. So it was more like a sister type deal. So I always felt like I was abandoned as a child mm -hmm. um, because I wasn't raised by either one of my parents. And so that, I say, catapulted me into some situations when I became an adult, I got involved with some guys that weren't for my what weren't in my best interest let me just put it that way mm -hmm. and so I left them of course got out of that relationship and I look back at it the abandonment allowed me to advance the abandonment caused advancement because had I not experienced any of those things I would not be a life coach talking about divorce I wouldn't have a show I, so it, it just it advanced me so the abandonment was necessary. And I said on the post, I have to go through it. So type a chat, type a post, type a comment, say you had to go through it. Mm. I had to go through it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Because hindsight always shows you, you know, what it is. It, it gives you so much clarity. Yeah. You know, when you're able to see things in hindsight. And thanks for uh, sharing, you know, yeah, some transparent absolutely. moments. No, I appreciate that for sure. Well, coach, this has been um, a great segment. Let me, first of all, let me just acknowledge you for being gr brave to take that that step and with the YouTube channel and being transparent with your life and helping other people recover because I've watched some of your videos and some of the guests that you had on there was really good. Oh, I was wow. like, oh, this is, this is some good stuff. So um, <laughs> I want to acknowledge you for that. And I also want to acknowledge you for taking a step to, to go through the divorce because I think, I know I struggle with going through my divorce because I'm like, oh my God, is God going to be mad at me? Or, you know, like, yeah. was a, you know, so um, I want to acknowledge you for having the courage to do that as well and to continue on with your life and to continue to share your story with people and be oh, able wow. to impact people as well. So I just want to acknowledge you for those things. Thank you. Thank you so much. No problem. Do you have any closing wisdom that you can help the listeners with today? Oh, yes. As we're talking about forgiveness, you know, it's not easy to forgive. I know it's not. Um, I've had to do it pretty much all my life as a child and all the way through adulthood, mm -hmm. even having to forgive my mom and dad for the decision they made. As I stated, I was not raised by neither one, either one of them. Mm -hmm. And so um, forgiveness is one of those things that it is. It's not for the other person. It's for you because in order to move on in any kind of relationship, whether it's a friendship or a relationship with a man, a monogamous relationship, you have to learn how to forgive. Um, because like I said, it's about you. It's not really about the other person because that person that has wronged you, they've moved on, they've done other things. And we, the person, the, um, the victim we have, we're still holding on to baggage because of, um, unforgiveness and once you forgive you will be so free you will feel free <laughs> uh, that situation won't even bother you anymore if you truly uh, have forgiven that person so that's what I would like to share and work on you get the help that you need to and be uh, able to forgive mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah I love that I love that I read a quote or I think I can't remember who said it. They say unforgiveness is like you drinking poison, expecting the other person to die. Mm. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I was just like, that's heavy. That's heavy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. For yes. sure. So coach, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So I'm on Instagram and Facebook under Divorce Talk with Twyla. Um, feel free to go out there and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Divorce Talk with Twyla as well. Like Sean said, that's a weekly live show every Monday night. 
um, it's on a break right now. We're kicking it back off in September. So go check out some previous shows and be encouraged if you, especially if you're in the space of divorce, contemplating divorce, you know someone that's going through it. There's some great, great content out there that will be an encouragement and blessing for you in your situation. Yes, for sure. And I approve that message. I'm subscribed as well and been watching your content because the great content that I I'm able to learn from your channel. I'm just like, I could take this and, and still help somebody else with it. And just stuff that I'm still learning about myself. Like I have not arrived, you know? That's right. None of us have. Right, right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. So Brave Hearts community, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, watch the content, share her content. And also, if you are watching this, make sure you subscribe to my channel as well. Hit the subscribe button, share. And if you are listening to this via podcast, make sure that you leave a rating and review by doing so that puts you on a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like freebies? Who doesn't like Amazon? Uh, so make sure you do that. Uh, leave an honest rating and review. This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach with special guests. Twilight and Marks. Yes. All right, Brave Hearts community. Take care.